Hello everyone, today I'll be ranking every LEGO Star Wars set from The Mandalorian. Surprisingly, there have already been 20 sets based off the relatively new show. Being that it's one of the few Disney Star Wars products that everyone actually enjoys though, this doesn't surprise me. With that said, let's go on and get into this list. The very last spot at number 20 is taken by the Pirate Snub Fighter. I have to say this is just easily the worst set from The Mandalorian. It has nothing of value. The build is okay and the pirates are cool, but it's a very small part of the season that this set just can't really stand on its own. It needed some more figures or something that gave it some lawn standing value and recognition. I will say it's a pretty good pairing with Mandos in one, but besides that, there's not too much interest here. All of these things aren't held by the fact that this set is somehow priced at $35, which is just outrageous. This set just doesn't feel like it's worth my money or my time. Next at 19 is Trouble on Tatooine. This set from Season 2 is cool, but it's just not a standout. The builds like the Tuscan Hut and Speeder are both wonderful and fun, but similar to the last set, it wasn't really a big piece of the season, so this kind of just leaves the set without much impact or playability beyond this one scene. This set's definitely better than the Snub Fighter, but it just has some similar issues that hold it back. This set's price at least is in line, whereas the Snub Fighter was not. Number 19 is the Spider Tank. This set's fine, it just kind of falls short. The build is good, but not very accurate. They definitely base this build off concept art rather than being able to see the episode and then release the set. The techniques, however, though, used for this build are absolutely fantastic. In particular, the legs are amazing. They use this rubber Technic piece combined with normal Technic to give it kind of some bounce and suspension to the legs. It's very neat and adds a lot to the set and kind of makes the spider droid feel more alive. Then of course on top of that you have all the other play features with it that just make it more fun too. The figures really only have Bo-Katan as the standout. Don't get me wrong, the Mando and Grogu are good, but we've seen these guys everywhere a thousand times before, so they don't have much pull anymore. Like I mentioned though, that Bo-Katan is amazing and definitely a worthwhile reason to get this set. In the end though, it's just not a set that gets me very excited. So despite being an okay set, it just can't compete with the others on this list. Number 17 is the ATST Raider. This ATST is a great build and the extra colors are very fun and tell you right away this isn't your typical Imperial ATST. I can't say too much more about the build because it's that good. There's not that much to comment about. It's pretty similar to the Rogue One model, which I absolutely adore. The minifigures in this set are great grouping too. You got two Raiders, Cara Dune, and the Mandalorian. This is the exact figures and vehicles you need to recreate this awesome scene from Season 1. So while this set is a little more niche like the others on this list previously, it's self-contained enough and gives you enough that you can reenact the scene just with this set, and that's what makes it so much better than those other ones. Next, number 16 is Boba Fett's Starship. I want to start by saying this build is terrific, and there are so many great details everywhere you look. The bottom red looks beautiful, and all the slopes and curves really come together to form a perfect shape. The same can be said about the body and really the entire build. There is, however, one problem here with that build, and that is it's just way too small. I get they didn't want to make it UCS sized or anything, but room for only one minifigure in the cockpit is pretty embarrassing when this ship's supposed to be able to fit a lot more than that. Besides that, there are only two minifigures here, and while they are good, at a $50 price point, that's just unacceptable. At the end of the day though, it is a Slave 1 and a very good model, despite its small size, so I can't rank it too low. The 15th spot is taken by the Dark Trooper Helmet. This helmet isn't even really a helmet, it's more of just the head of the droid, but that's fine because it's still pretty darn cool. The angles and curves were expertly handled and specifically around the eyes look really great. The bottom half in general just looks really good and maybe some of their best work on a helmet ever. The top half is a little stud heavy, but it's still good and got a good curve to it. It's a great helmet, but the Dark Trooper is a little more niche, and I already don't care for the helmet line that much personally, so despite it being a good build, that's why it's so low on my list. Next at 14 is the Mandalorian Battle Pack. 
This battle pack has four unique Mandalorian warriors. All are brightly colored and very fun to look at. They come with accessories like visors and rangefinders, and they all even have capes. It's really cool to see all the extra customization the set offers. The Mandalorians were such a great choice for a battle pack. The builds are hit and miss. The speeder is neat, but the pile of rubble is kind of just there to pad the piece count. Still though, it's a solid set, and my only complaint is that I see the figures are so distinct, which is almost a good thing, but it kind of is also a bad thing. It makes them really look good, and I love all their designs, but it can almost make them a little hard to army build. There's nothing bad here, and I think this is a very solid set and battle pack. It's just we're starting to get in some really good sets coming up, so I couldn't put it any higher. Number 13 is the Mandalorian Helmet. Like I mentioned before, I just don't care for the helmets all that much, so that's why this is kind of lower. Waiting to even talk about the build, this choice for helmet was just great in particular because... Well, the Mandalorian show has a big emphasis on Din Djarin not removing his helmet. It's of great importance to the character and a pretty big plot point at times. So building Din Djarin's helmet was a great choice. Moving on to the build too, they did do it justice. It looks really good. They didn't give it the full, you know, shiny chrome like it probably should have had to be totally accurate, but obviously that would have inflated the cost way higher than should have been. So that's understandable. Still though, they work in some of those shinier pieces to give it a little luster, and I think it works well enough. They got all the shapes, indents, and curves very well done here, and it's a really great set and a great helmet build. Number 12 is the Bark Speeder Escape. This set is kind of weird. It's a set based on a flashback from the Mandalorian. It's not really something I thought we'd actually see in a Lego set. I do, however, love that they did it. We get to see Kelleran Beck in this set, and he looks amazing. The details on his robes, the printing there, is awesome. Besides him, Grogu is here and two 501st clones. And not a bad lineup of figures at all. It certainly matches the scene it's from. The speeder build, however, is pretty oversized as per usual, but it's still very good. I love the red and white colors on it. They blend together very well. The last piece of the build is this random lamp in the corner. It was just added to pat the piece count and really has no purpose. I know there is a big meme about this set and people kind of going crazy for it, but in reality, everyone knows this is just a joke from them. And while I can say this set is fine, I can't be the only one that feels weird paying $30 for this and the only real build is the speeder. It's still good, but that definitely bugs me. Number 11 is the child. Of course, Grogu gets his own buildable figure, and it's just as cute as him. They did a great job with his head and his features like his eyes and ears. It's very smooth and looks exactly like him and the puppet. The body below him even has the perfect shape too, matching his robes. I will say, however, it is a little too stud heavy for me. I think some more tiles should have been put on down there, but it doesn't ruin the set in any way. The last little detail to mention is the silver shift knob, which was a great addition. Little Easter eggs like that really make the set come alive and just bring it up a notch. There was a lot of care put in this build, and I think they did a phenomenal job with it. It's a very good 18 plus set. Number 10 is the Dark Trooper Attack. This scene was so awesome. Having Luke show up in the Mandalorian just blew everyone away, including me. And I'm really glad they made a playset depicting it. The hallway looks really great and has enough playability to make it a good time. You might think a hallway Lego set might be boring, but there's plenty of play features in here to reenact that scene. The main point of this set though, I will say, is the figures and Luke of course is here and looks great, but then you get three dark troopers. The molds for these figures are top tier and very good, something I really like to army build. They look perfect and it's great to see so many together in a small set. For that reason, and a good build, this remains one of the better sets released from the Mandalorian. The ninth spot is taken by the Imperial Armed Marauder. Now besides just being a good Mandalorian set, this is a great Imperial Army Builder. Of course, it's great for replaying the scene from the show as well, but most people will be primarily using this for their Imperial Army. Either way, the build has plenty of features to play with and that are accurate to the show. On top of that spectacular build, the figures are even better. Grief Karga and the Artillery Trooper are amazing figures. The Artillery Trooper in particular I want to spotlight because it might be 
the best Imperial Trooper ever. Then on top of those guys, you get two Imperial Stormtroopers, which you can never complain about getting more of. All in all, this set is a great Imperial Army Builder, and yet it still manages to be a pretty darn good Mandalorian set too. Number 8 is Mando's N1 Starfighter. This set is technically based on the Book of Boba Fett, but let's be real, it's a Mandalorian set. And it's a great one at that. The N1 is an amazing ship, and Mando's modified version is so cool to see in LEGO. I can, however, admit it's a little rough and could have used some more curves and tiles in the front, but I think the rugged look is what they're kind of going for to match the hodgepodge vibe of the ship. Overall, it still works great as a playset. As far as the figures go, those aren't too bad either. For 60 bucks, I would have liked to see another figure or two, but the lineup isn't the worst I've seen. The same can be said about the build a little bit too. This price tag is the biggest issue out of all of them. I feel if this price was just reduced, there'd be absolutely no complaints about this set. But instead, it's $60, and that leaves the set's main issue. Next, slot 7 is taken by the Armor's Mandalorian Forge. The Forge is a big part in Season 1 and the later seasons, honestly. And it is so cool. I'm so glad this is a set choice they made. There's so many little features and nods to the show here, and I love it. This reminds me of a classic LEGO set with its style of build, and it does so in the best way possible. Plus, the figures are so good here. The armor, Paz Vizsla, and the Mandalorian are all major characters that were done very well in this set. It's a small set, great for a desk display, and the Forge was a fantastic set choice since it's such a huge part of the Mandalorians and their culture, which really is the main focus of this show. I think this is a super underrated set, but I can see why because the Mandalorians had a lot of good set releases. Number 6 is the Razor Crest. This is a perfect playset of the Razor Crest. That build has a great exterior, but I think the interior is my favorite part. The bottom can completely open up and is very easy to play in. The cockpit is decently spacious as well. Besides this build though, the figures are good, albeit lacking in some quantity. You get Grief Karga, Mando, Grogu, IG-11, and an Imperial Scout Trooper. It's not bad, but I think Quill should have been included. Plus, a build of Quill's Blurg and a speeder for the Scout Trooper could have been cool little inclusions that really filled out the set. That's less of a negative though and just something I wish they did. This set is great and barely shy of perfect. Next at 5 is Paz Vizsla and Moff Gideon's Battle. This style of sets is one of my personal favorites. I love this build where it's almost a diorama but not quite. There's still all the charm of a playset and it's still at a reasonable cost. Not to mention, this was just a perfect pick for a set. The scene was so awesome, and being able to recreate it with all these play features and minifigures is so much fun. The figs are all extremely detailed in their designs and prints. Paz and Moff Gideon are both great, but the Praetorian guards are even better. The only slight hiccup is that there's only two included when there was three in that scene. It's just kind of lame, and I really wish they would have included that third one. I can't imagine one more minifigure would have cut into their profits that much, so at this point it was just Lego kind of being greedy. Other than that though, I absolutely adore this set and think it's one of their best. The fourth spot is taken by Ambush on Mandalore Battle Pack. This battle pack is an absolute beauty. The build is a great backdrop and I love that it's just not another speeder or walker build. Those can get very tiresome so this is a very nice shakeup. Another neat feature is it can attack the past Vizsla and Moff Gideon set. The main attraction though, of course with many battle packs, is the minifigures and that is no different here. The two Imperial Commandos look crazy good and the two blue Mandalorians are just as great. A great choice for a battle pack with some prime figures and all around it's so good even just as a normal set. Third place is taken by the Mandalorian Fane Fighter vs TIE Interceptor. This set is one of the best. I am a huge fan of the Versus sets, and this one was a great one. The Fane Fighter is cool and looks good, but it isn't very complex build, and the Interceptor is definitely the standout here. It almost feels like a mock with how many details it has and how sleek it is. I could rave about this build for hours and hours. I could easily find myself putting it at the top of the list for the most accurate playscale ship ever. It's just that good that I have to hand it to him. If I had to pick one area where this set fell short a little bit, I guess I would say the minifigures. 
None of them are bad, but the quantity and choice of figures could have used improvement. For $110, four minifigures, one of which is an astromech, it just feels very weak. The minifigures are the biggest blunder in the set, but it definitely doesn't ruin it. It's very hard to take away from those great builds. All in all, it's still plenty good and definitely good enough to make third on this list, but those minifigures hold it back from being a perfect set. The runner-up is the Imperial Light Cruiser. When I look at this set, I don't think I can even point out a single flaw. It's an absolutely phenomenal set. No matter who you were, the Light Cruiser was just a great set to see and finally introduced into LEGO. It looks so good, and they got the proportions pretty good for a playset. It's just as good for play as it is for display, just because it has a more complex shape than your typical Star Destroyer. That doesn't mean LEGO didn't do their part though in making this an absolute great adaptation. The details are everywhere and the design is very thought out. They did a splendid job. The figures match the ship's excellence too. You get the Mandalorian, Grogu, Fennec Shand, Cara Dune, Moff Gideon, and a Dark Trooper, all of which look amazing. And Moff Gideon was so great to finally see as he's the big bad in the series and we had not seen him up until that point. This was such a big episode from the series, and this is such a big set too. Inside and out, they did a great job with the set, and it's truly the best play set from The Mandalorian. Finally, we have made it to the top, and that top set is the UCS Razor Crest. By far, this is the best set from The Mandalorian. Part of me thinks it's almost unfair to even put it in the same list with the rest of these play sets, because it's just so good. This set uses its bigger budget in a very big way. So many details inside and out in this huge scale. From every room in the Razor Crest to every little panel on the outside, there's so much detail. This interior too might be the best interior in a LEGO Star Wars set ever. All the main rooms are here and they have exquisite detail. It feels fully complete, which isn't something you always see since the interior is rarely displayed. With how much time we spend in the ship during the show, I think that might be why they decided to go all out with that interior space, and it was a great call. Besides the interior though, the exterior doesn't disappoint at all. It's so smooth and looks absolutely fantastic. The only small complaint I can find is that the cockpit doesn't align perfectly, but other than that, an absolutely flawless set. Truly deserving of this top spot. And I didn't even have to mention the minifigures, which are amazing add-ons here too. This is a topic I don't think anyone can argue with. That was the last set from this list, so now I just want to thank you all for watching. Let me know in the comments what your top sets are, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.